the starting point for TikTok is to first figure out who are you targeting and where are those users online. Our users are, you know, 13 to 24 year olds. We started sort of posting organically and then we got on the TikTok ads platform and quickly realized that there are like six or seven variables, what location to target, what age, the interest, the keywords, the CTA description, and like what the creative style should be. We typically created three different ads in a single campaign and we put $30 a day behind each of those ads and then tested each of these variables in isolation. After about a month or so, we'd be able to figure out, okay, well, you know, download works better than install now. And this creative style is better. And you put this word in the description and it just performs better. And then we put them all together and it started to work pretty well. And then we started putting around a few hundred dollars behind each ad group. And then we found that our performance just like skyrocketed from there. And that was just in Australia. And they were like, cool, well, how would this look in the US or the UK or Canada? And we started doing the same ads across those countries that we knew worked and the performance just continued to improve and the CAC was less than a dollar for our installs. How long did you run it just to get some real good data? You can probably get results that show a lot of statistical significance within about a week. And then that point we kind of cut those ads and test a new variable. I think for me, the hardest part is just creating the content. How did you guys go about creating the actual ads? I got a younger brother and I went to him, I said, Hey, do you know any of your friends who want to be paid 50 bucks to make TikToks? We would go on TikTok and we'd scroll through the hashtags and find new trends. I'd then create a brief for these young people to make. And we just test all these different creatives and see what would work. And we'd also post some of these organic on our own TikTok and be like, cool, these ones got thousands of views. All right, that creative resonated with followers and they're probably going to resonate with that target user. Let's try them or let's try model around them. And then once you start seeing what ads work or what creatives work best, you just kind of create that style every time. When you're testing out the hashtags and looking for these creative briefs, are you going for a generic hashtag or are you going for a specific hashtag that's more tailored to your niche? It's probably a mix. Search of a bit around, you know, for me, it'd be like fitness or gym workouts. Then your feed becomes quite curated. It's not necessarily like seeing a great fitness video and copying it, seeing a great video and then applying the principles of what makes a good video to your kind of niche. You said creative is actually more important than targeting. 100%. If you can nail the creative then nailing you know things like location and interest and keywords and that sort of stuff will bring down your cac a little bit but having the creative that you know that works that resonates with your user you know it's got a good hook clear cta and brings them in the first kind of two seconds is where most of your viewers are going to drop off so it's really important that at the end you have like a strong clear cta talk to me about targeting then you set up your three creatives set it for about 30 dollars a day for each creative performing how does that targeting look like for each ad. Let's say we want to test the, the CTA. So we're going to test install now, download now, and you know get fit today. So mm. every single variable, the creative, the location, the interest keywords is all the same. Within four or five days, you're going to see, okay, this creative or this ad has a CTR of 1.5% and a CVR, which is a conversion rate of 25%. That ad that has download now is clearly the one that performs best. So download now is the CTA that we're going to use going forward. From my experience, the more granular I can get, the better it is in terms of CPA. We had a sports app and we're targeting the NFL, American football, and we are doing like $5 cost per installs. When I changed the targeting to people who liked every single team, that dropped the CPA to like a buck 50. But if I'm going to start general, is it better to have hashtags, interest? Where should I start with that? What we've found is to like dump as much as you can in there as possible. And then same with hashtags, we'll put as many as we can there as well. And we'll even turn on the targeted expansion, which kind of lets the ad pick more areas to go for if it thinks it's going to perform well. So for TikTok, I think going broad is really effective. Are you? How have you been able to scale without sacrificing the performance of an ad? You can't actually increase or decrease a campaign by more than 15% without it like kind of resetting. So if you're going to scale something up, either do it gradually or create a completely new campaign. And the other thing that we found is if we created one campaign that had $500 into it and had one ad group, the performance would be pretty bad. But if we created five campaigns that are literally identical as that one with $100 behind each, the performance remained, you know, really, really good. Was the organic videos driving downloads at all? Some videos can go viral and that's a big hit and you'll get a bunch of downloads. Others, you know, can flop. And at the moment, organic TikTok is quite tough. So we use it as a platform to help us get a better gauge on what ads we want to be sending out. So it helps us test creatives. Also, like all of the creatives that I get our TikTok team 
to make they go post they get posted online organically and then we use them as ads as well testing to grow your community or grow your following there's something called a community engagement campaign on tiktok so we put like 20 bucks behind this a day and just let it run for like months and what this does is it kind of brings the right people to your account to follow you to view your videos and it helps you kind of grow your community and your following i think we grew around thirty thousand followers on tiktok just using this community engagement how did you pick the video to use for that community engagement. We picked two videos that perform quite well organically. Hey, if it works on organic, it's likely to work on paid as well. It more often than not works. We run all of our TikTok ads once we know they work on Facebook as Instagram Reels. Okay. And this is almost transferable exactly. So if you have a campaign that gets you 10,000 users at a CAC of $1 on TikTok, you go say, cool, that campaign, that ad is awesome. That craves really working. Let's go run that on Facebook through just Instagram reels, and then it'll pretty much work exactly the same. So that's another way how we kind of were able to scale. I know with TikTok, you need an MMP because you can't target iOS 14 and up users unless you have that. Do you have one that you suggest we go with? Yeah, so we use we use Apps Flyer. Uh, my advice would be don't get locked into a contract until you like kind of know what your, like how many units your, your downloads you're getting per month and it's consistent. Otherwise you'll end up paying overs, which is what happened to us. I also want to talk to you about the key metrics, you know, that really suggest a high performing ad? Is it the click through rate? Is it the install rate? What are you really looking for? There's three key things to, to, to look for when you're testing your ads. The first is you want a CPM, which is like the cost per thousand impressions to be less than $6 typically. Then you want a CTR, which is the click through rate to be anything above 1%. And then a CVR, which is the conversion rate. You want that to be anywhere above 25%. If you have those three numbers, your ads will be converting at less than a dollar. Is there anything like you would say, don't do this when you're first starting out with TikTok ads because you made that mistake. Don't waste your money kind of unnecessarily. Start with like a plan and test everything over time. I think that's the best way to go about it. Stay up to date with trends, reply to comments. Also get in touch with TikTok and see if you can get yourself on a whitelist. And the whitelist essentially allows you to get access to new features, allows you to hit new audiences. What other trends have you seen? Jake. I think the most important part about trends is actually the music. Some of the best ads that we've had, you know, has been a bunch of pictures we put together and then like it relates to a song, but everyone loves the song and the song goes viral. So they're the ones that perform best. So I would be looking out for trending songs more than kind of trending videos. Anything else on TikTok you want to make sure we cover? Although TikTok releases a lot of new like features, don't fall for it all. I mean, it's always good to test, but I think like, you know, they put up these things where you like kind of page pops up when they're watching the ad we tested and mm -hmm. people like hated it spark ads is another thing to kind of consider so spark ads are where you run your existing videos on your own tiktok profile as ads so you can go to a creator and say hey if you post this video on your account we're going to make it an ad and that's going to bring a lot of traffic to your profile you need a lot of followers it's a lot of views and also that's great for you because they, people are going to download the app or download whatever they want you from that creative so it's a really kind of like mutually beneficial situation for you and the creators, assuming the creator is kind of related to what you're doing. And the key for that is to get the video code. The only other thing that I've found is we, we kind of keep track of what we call our best performing creatives. So we have like a list mm -hmm. of all them. And then we also have like struggler ads, ones that are like CTR is a little bit lower. The CVR might not be right. And we kind of take those and we compare them to our best performance and say, okay, well, what are these missing? And then we often then kind of tweak the creative again and run the ad again. So that's been really effective. The last thing is you can't run TikTok ads with a watermark on it. If you had to start again, would you start with Spark ads or would you start with just the normal ads that you started with? Spark ads are good because it brings people to your account as well. So you would get a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. For example, like you need a thousand followers to put a link in your bio. Otherwise you can't do that. But I think after that, you get kind of more flexibility running normal ads through the ads manager. Normal ads versus community ads. Yeah. So community ads, they're not going to get you downloads. So I would say not one or the other, but do them both. But the community ads, I'm talking 20 bucks a day, like minimum amount spend will get you a few hundred followers every day. The Spark ads, you gotta, you tell the influencer to go to their TikTok file, creator tools, it's all within. They gotta get this ad scene turned on and then select the TikTok post that they want. So this one, go into the ad settings with that little button. And then you gotta get this ad settings, turn that on, turn on ads, and then generate this code. And you guys need this code and send it over to us. We were tracking the search volume of our branded keyword 
for this client. And you can see that after the TikTok campaign, the search score for that brand went up. Are people just, you know, swiping up or tapping on the ad in the app or are they going to the app store and searching for step in and downloading the app? Yeah, I think it's probably like a 70, 30 split. So 70% of people probably tapping on the ad, 30% are searching. We've seen when we've turned off ads and what it looks like when they're on. So 100% like kind of it helps with your branding, helps with like your ranking of your keywords. We actually found that a lot of people would find the ad and then they'd go to the app store and then misspell step in. So we had to create an app store campaign, which is like step, it's like misspellings. And it's just like a hundred different ways that you could spell step and, and that would capture everyone. It was like super cheap, but um, that was right. kind of like an interesting find there.